Hi everyone, today is August 3, 2022. It is 5.15 p.m. And it is 27 degrees Celsius. I'm here at 585 Bloor Street. The Via Bloor condominium development here. They've got some nice chairs and tables out now. Some very beautiful buildings. Here's a view of what it looks like looking up. Absolutely stunning buildings. I just love the way that these buildings have been built and I love this location it's such a great location to the east which is that way you're literally one bridge away from the Danforth and to the west this way you're very right like you're right beside Rosedale and you're very close to Yorkville It looks like they've got a 3,490 square foot retail space here for lease. This is a great space for lease. I wonder who's going to move in. Maybe a small supermarket. I wonder if they're going to make a maybe a small Whole Foods. I think what would be very cool would be maybe a a small Pusa Terry's store. Supermarket, I should say. <laughs> Here's St. Peter St. Simons. This is the Anglican Church. And this church has been here for many, many years now. We're doing quite a bit of development work on the sidewalk opposing us I wonder if they're going to be widening the sidewalk maybe making it so that there's a bike lane there that'll be very convenient for the residents of 585 Bushy, but also for people who want to ride their bikes down into Blue Street from the bridge. And here's Toronto Fire Station 313. And this fire station has been here also for many, many years now. And it looks like they got a lot of, like, space. 
but they only have space for two trucks. They have a lot of space, it looks like, for office spaces and workspace, maybe storage. Or maybe based on the historical frequency of fires in the area, one only needs two fire trucks to service the demand for fire trucks and fire services. Here's the end of the construction that's happening here across the street. I really, I really do hope that they add more bike lanes in this city and make it more accessible for people who are using alternative forms of transportation other than cars. And that's the bridge that goes to the Rosedale neighborhood of Toronto. And Rosedale is a very upscale neighborhood with a very rich history and old history. Now we're passing Sherburn Street and we're walking <coughs> west on Blue Street. Rosedale has a very unique history in that a lot of the people who were very prominent in the development of the city of Toronto back then it used to be called the city of York but a lot of very prominent people used to live in the Rosedale area I believe that uh, the families who, who still live there today, maybe some of them, I believe they may still be very uh, involved and inter interconnected into the leadership behind the city. Which makes sense because that's where the leadership kind of first concentrated in the development of the city. There's a road that takes you down to Mount Pleasant Road. On this side of the street, Mount Pleasant Road turns into Huntley Street as it goes south of Blue Street. And Huntley Street is a part of the Upper Jarvis area in Toronto, which was established back in 1824. A lot of different parts of Toronto's history goes back over a hundred years and that's a pretty long time though some say that there's other places in the world that you know European cities that go back thousands of years and so Canada's a, a relatively young country and I would extend that statement to Toronto that it's a young, relatively young city compared to other cities in the world. 
Here's the artwork with the people walking by on the LED screen. It's just a lot of people walking by in repetition, just keep repeating that animation. That's one of the things that makes this part of Bloor very prominent, that makes it stand out. And here's the patio at Starbucks. Looks like it's pretty busy today. It's a Saturday evening, so I'm guessing most people are going to be out and about at this time. I believe that today and tomorrow, and I think maybe even Friday, was the air show. And so I didn't get a chance to film the air show, maybe next year. And that's one of the reasons I want to get an e-bike because I can travel to different events much more easier and quicker. And it just makes it more accessible for me. And here, look at the Manulife Insurance building. It's a very imposing building on Bloor Street. Fill a couple of drops. Looks like it's going to be starting to rain soon. And I felt a little, some more drops. I'm gonna get my umbrella out. That's usually how it starts here. Sorry about that. I had to get my umbrella out so I can protect my camera and it doesn't get wrecked. And there we are. And here's a famous public work of art in front of 160 Blue Street East.
passing Park Road. Actually, let's take a walk on Park Road. Let's take a little detour here. Once in a while, I take a detour. And trying something new, taking a new path, trying a different way. Here's the Asquith Green Park, and there's a homeless shelter right next door. I think that's where people can get access to food, maybe a place to stay, something somewhere safe. And across from here, we've got the Raba Fine Foods mini supermarket open 24 hours. And this is the Asquith Park building. I think the rain may have stopped. Let me check it out here. Yeah. I don't feel any more droplets, so I'm going to go ahead and close the, the good old umbrella here until it is needed again. I may not need it again. It looks like the clouds are clearing away. That tends to happen sometimes in Toronto. It'll be okay in clear skies and then it'll start raining out of nowhere. And then again, it'll stop raining out of nowhere. This is Sherlock Holmes Walk. And that's a pretty cool name for a street. I've read a little bit of Sherlock Holmes novels and stories back in the day. And I always found Sherlock Holmes stories very compelling and interesting. He's always confronted with this mystery and this challenge that he has to learn more about and use his intuition and knowledge and all these things to try and solve these mysteries and he takes you with him. Here's a development site. Here's a look around. I wonder if, what this is going to be here, whether it's going to be a condo or is it just going to be a retail development. Across the street here, we've got the Toronto Reference Library. And it's starting to rain again. Let me get my trusty old umbrella here, ready for the potential rain. All right. Cross over here. So this is the Toronto Reference Library. This is my favorite library in the city. It is a huge library. There's a lot of different architecture and design elements that went into putting this library together.
and there's a Balzac's coffee shop in here on the main floor of the Toronto Reference Library. We're now here at Young Street and Yorkville Avenue. There's a huge development here across the street. All these stores are either sold or for sale. All these commercial retail units. And I'm gonna unlock my camera and show you guys this building on top of the commercial units. Beautiful, beautiful construction, beautiful building. Amazing, amazing redevelopment of this area. You guys should have seen it before the development was taking place. And so I'm really eager and curious to see how it's gonna turn out. And here's a unit that's available for lease. It says 2,500 square feet. Here's Yorkville crepes. Dine-in, take-out, and delivery. They've got crepe, salads, espresso, and more. Looks like it's closed at the moment, though it's Saturday evening. Makes sense. It is 5.40 p.m. Here's Town Hall Square. Town Hall Square is a very calm and peaceful place. It's got all these bushes here and these trees. It's a very quiet and relaxing place. It's very close to the Yorkville location of the Toronto Public Library here. And this Yorkville location of the Toronto Public Library is a very well built building and it was built in 1906 so it's been here for well over a hundred years here's fire station 312 and it looks like they have three garages one seems to be for their SUV the other two I believe have fire trucks in them That looks like there might be a wedding or a reception of some sort going on. I believe this metal wall here with these patterns on it looks like they're flower designs is a public artwork installation. I'm gonna get a look up, up close look at it. Then we'll see if I can step back and get a view from a bit of a distance. I believe I saw a installation, sorry, I saw some information regarding it. Here's Buka, it's an upscale restaurant at the base of the Four Seasons private residences. Let's say they're taking wedding photos here. I'll just go back around. I don't want to interrupt. People are trying to get some work done. But uh, pretty cool. Try to get a, a far shot of the wall. From here. And we're now passing in front of the Four Seasons Hotel and Residences sign. And that's the artwork. In front of the Four Seasons.
we're now here at Bay Street and Yorkville Avenue. Here's a look north on Bay Street. Not much going on. It's about 5.45 p.m. so I guess most people are either already at restaurants or I would venture a guess that some people might have perceived the episodes of rain and clouds temporarily to be a more permanent situation than it was and so they may have made the assumption that it's gonna rain let's just stay indoors which would be a pretty rational and reasonable conclusion given Toronto's weather pattern sometimes Here's a Swiss art chocolate here on Yorkville store. They've got chocolate and coffee and gelato and all kinds of delicious food items. parking that goes all the way down Chitoria Nervoso of course busy as usual around this time I can hear a trombone playing in the distance sounds like it is a busker named Wendy who used to perform in the I think it's got this Toronto Symphony Orchestra and you'll occasionally hear her in Yorkville she does shows occasionally steady day here today in Yorkville And this is Hazelton Avenue. Here's a look north on Hazelton Avenue. We are currently walking west on Yorkville Avenue. Quite a number of people out at the one Hazelton restaurant. They got an extra patio set up outside the first patio as well for some extra dining space outside. This is a cool Aston Martin. And here's a look at the Hazelton Hotel.
we're now approaching Avenue Road. Right, Yorkville Avenue and Avenue Road. Ready to look south on Avenue Road. You can see the CN Tower in the distance there. And here's a look north on Avenue Road. Looks like it's getting kind of cloudy. Let's see if I can unlock my camera to show you what the clouds look like, the sky looks like. It's pretty cloudy. It might rain a bit. Here's the blue decorating that they did to make the supporting columns and supporting metal pillars more blue and I guess more camouflage against the background. Here's Polestar Toronto. Yeah, it's an electric car dealership. This is pretty cool. The when you look up under the sign of the Yorkville Village, there's all these LEDs here. That's pretty cool. Looks like they're different patterns, and they could probably change them electronically to any design they like. The CN Tower is also like that. It's got all these LEDs on it that allows one to basically make any pattern or any color that they want the CN Tower to be. And so I thought that was pretty cool. I covered that in an earlier video that I did on my CN Tower tour. I really went into details on the details of the CN Tower. And here's the Yorkville Village underground parking. It's a beautiful entrance. Here's Via Cavour. And they got Italian menswear. This is the western entrance into Yorkville Village where there's a set of escalators that'll take you right down into Whole Foods. That was a Lamborghini that just passed by. Here's the Hazelton Place Retirement Residence. I don't know why, but it makes me very sad every time I I walk by and I see seniors eating their food and stuff like that. And sometimes it's okay if they're sitting with a friend or with family or whatever, but sometimes you'll see them sitting alone and it's kind of heartbreaking to to think about that. So I try not to think about it. I guess that's why it's important that one lives a good life. That way when one reaches the end of life, one has a crystal clear conscience, hold it hopefully. And we're now across the street. Looks like they've got an interesting setup going on here. I'm not sure what that is. Maybe it's a workspace of some sort. And across the street there is White Couture. Next to Five Elements and Refine Cosmetic Clinic. White Couture is a, looks like they sell wedding dresses there. And here's a look at the Soto Soto restaurant up close. 
that's what it looks like. And you take the stairs up. And we've got some nice flowers and plants in front. And across the street we have the Yorkville Animal Hospital. Across the street is Miami Fades. I believe that that is a hair salon. Where they cut hair. Well, at least that's what I think it is. here at Davenport Road and Avenue Road. Here's your look east on Davenport Road. Here's your look west on Davenport Road. Here's your look south on Avenue Road. You know, it seems like every time I cover the Yorkville area, I always end up spotting new places that I had no idea were even there. But I'm glad I discovered them. I'm glad I'm aware that I know that they're there. I think that like with any other place, the first several times someone goes somewhere, one still doesn't have like the full perception of what is there. But after several times of going to a particular place, one has a more complete perception of it. condominium with special parking elevators I believe you just got to wait for them to I guess open the door and you drive in and you get to park on the floor of the apartment that you're going to and so that's pretty cool here's Hazleton Avenue These buildings are all Mizrahi developments. I haven't seen Mizrahi in a long time. I had a chance to meet uh, him and his wife a while ago. I should say years back. And they're very nice. I like them. They seemed okay from what I could tell.
It's very nice and calm and quiet and peaceful day here. That's a beautiful house. Very nice and clean. Very crisp lines around the windows. Looks like it's very well kept. Here's another beautiful house. I think this one's one of my favorites. I wish it wasn't like semi-detached. I wish it, I wish it was a fully detached, but nonetheless, very beautiful. It's a unique and cozy looking house. It's got a red door. That's unique. Most of these doors are kind of brownish or grayish, blackish. That one's got a red door, makes it stand out. These are big wooden doors. That's pretty cool. So they're doing construction on this side of the street. I'm gonna cross over to the east side of Hazelton Avenue. This is a very nice house. These are very long lots. And there's 36 Hazleton. It's a very unique building. Just gotta unlock my camera to get a full view. Very unique building. Looks like it's about five, six, seven stories tall. It's a very private building. this one here soon I think I'll end it at the potato chip for good measure and here's the pathway that leads into Yorkville village we'll go through this way on the other side there it is there's a blue chip sculpture very cool it's very um, attention getting. Stands out. Oh, they got a sticker here. Let me take a look. Yeah, it says Miriam Shield Fine Art, Brendan McNaughton, Blue Chip 2016, Aluminum. That's what, that's what it's made of. It's made out of aluminum. Very cool. And yeah, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I hope you guys like this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button. For more videos, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.